Loading. Welcome to Access the Animus. Hello everyone and welcome to a new video here on Access the Animus. Today we're going to discuss a number of news and juicy information coming from an interview dedicated to the endings of the Assassin's Creed games by Axios.com with narrative director Darby McDavid. In the video we're going to briefly touch upon a teaser concerning Eivor's final days in Vingland in Assassin's Creed Valhalla and some fun and interesting comments on the endings of Revelations, Embers and Black Flag before we move on to the main topic of the video that is this abandoned piece of lore from Assassin's Creed Unity that involved Juno and the so-called Hidden Twelve Isu that were planned to possess by ex targets in Assassin's Creed Origins. We're also going to discuss where else this Hidden 12 Isu had been referencing Unity, also through a look at some deleted audio files that we had unearthed back in 2015. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking it, subscribing to our channel and turning the notifications on so you won't miss any of our future updates. And with that out of the way, let's dive into all these news tied to the endings of the Assassin's Creed games. Last week, on February the 22nd, Axios.com published an interview, whose link you can find in the description, that was hosted by journalist Steven Totillo with narrative director Darby McDavid about how the endings of the Assassin's Creed games are made and especially about Darby's take on the ones he worked on. He commented that he wanted the first scenes and the last scenes to stick with the players and I dare say that he worked pretty well so far. And he also added that especially for what concerns the endings, the teams always want them to be as playable as possible. In classic Darby style, the interview featured some teasers for the future and in this case, considering the topic at hand was game endings, he did mention that there are plans or at least concrete ideas as to how to answer some of the lingering questions that have emerged from the ending of the most recent chapters of the franchise, that is Valhalla, with a specific mention dedicated to why Eivor spent her last days in North America rather than in England. So yes, we can expect to see more about that in the future, but the article also focused on on many other endings that Darby helped writing for the franchise. For example, it did mention the ending of Assassin's Creed Revelations, the main game that rose out of the ashes of the 3DS game Assassin's Creed Lost Legacy, which actually included a now renowned speech by Ezio Auditore to Desmond Miles, which hadn't been planned for the 3DS version. The second example was the animated movie Assassin's Creed Embers, which showed the last moments of Ezio Auditore's life and for which the key element highlighted in the interview was that back then it was canonically correct to have that part of Ezio's life in an external medium because in-game Desmond would have only been able to see Ezio's memories up until he passed his genes to his daughter Flavia. This last comment was also expanded upon when Totilo shared Darby's full comment on this topic where he added that back then writers were strict with the rules of genetic memory and that actually caused them to be more inventive with their storytelling in order to follow those rules but at the same time that also cemented the logic surrounding the franchise. Ah, <sighs> the good old days I guess, I miss them too. Another small example was the ending of Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag which ended with one of the best scenes and the best songs used in the franchise, The Parting Glass, which Darby had apparently liked since his college days in Ireland and that was sung by actress Sarah Green who played Anne Bonny and is Irish herself and using Darby's words, sang it perfectly before the game was wrapped. But the huge elephant in the room, or shall I say in the article, at least in my opinion, was one small bit of lore that Darby added to Assassin's Creed Unity that was meant to create some ties with Assassin's Creed Origins, which was in early development at the time. Now, you might remember that the only modern day part in Assassin's Creed Unity, aside from the few dialogues with Bishop, Bet you removed her from your memories, didn't you? Well, the modern day content was mostly located in some text-only files called Assassin Intel. The 14th file of this set, called Security Breach Memo, contained a decrypted text written by Juno where she did herald the necessity for people to join her in the Grey, the digital realm made up of all the worldwide networks where she resided in as an artificial intelligence. 
At the end of that file, which seemed to be addressed towards her instruments of the first will, Juno mentioned that in order to complete her plan, they had to collect more DNA samples and to provide more data in order to quote-unquote revive her race, the Hidden Twelve, and to remake her world. Since Unity was released, this mention of the Hidden Twelve characters boggled the fans' minds for years. Most of them, me included, thought it could be a reference to the Twelve Gods, that is, the Twelve most important deities of the Greek and Roman pantheons, otherwise known as the Consentence in Latin, and that were also mentioned in the Assassin's Creed Revelations multiplayer files. Whatever the theory though, this admittedly tiny lore bit never got a payoff since, and eventually got forgotten by most fans, until 2020, where Darby mentioned on Twitter that it was a concept that tied Juno to 12 Egyptian Isu, and that was meant to have an impact on Assassin's Creed Origins, but he did not add any further details. Until last week at least, and that's where the Axios interview comes into play, more than 7 years after the release of Assassin's Creed Unity. In there, Darby mentioned that, while he was working on the modern day files of Assassin's Creed Unity, he had an idea where the protagonist of what would have become Assassin's Creed Origins, that is Bayek, would hunt down, and I quote, 12 Templars who had been overtaken by the souls of 12 Egyptian gods. And because of this idea, he did reference the so-called Hidden Twelve in Unity as, using Darby's words, Juno's Hidden Twelve Apostles, the 12 Isu that Juno would have needed in the modern day and whose conscience or AIs had been working for her since the ancient Egypt times and possibly before that. Eventually, though, according to the article, Darby's team ditched this idea shortly after Unity's launch, leaving this tease unfulfilled and, like I said, many fans scratching their head. While the idea of the payoff for the Hidden Twelve was already pretty interesting like that, the day after the release of the interview, its host Steven Totillo also released Darby's full answer on the topic, where he mentioned that the concept about the Twelve Egyptian Isu possessing the Templars came during the conception phase for Origins, and because the team was so excited about it, Darby seated it in Unity when he was asked to help write in the modern day files for that game. Then, a few weeks after Unity released, the team working on Origins ditched this idea, using Darby's words, because of the production reality, and that is why that bit of lore has been pretty much abandoned ever since. When the article and the full transcripts of Darby's answers were released, a few members of the AC community started commenting around it and one that surprised me was by Lacrosse Daemon from the Assassin's Creed Wiki, who actually told me, you probably already realized this, but base game Origins still has 12 main Templars as the members of the Snake, the Order of the Ancients. And I was like, no, I absolutely didn't realize that, but that's actually true. So the idea of the 12 targets had apparently stayed until the final release of Origins, and you might remember that all the members of the Order of the Ancients in Egypt had a moniker, a cryptonym to call themselves without using their real name, like the crocodile, the lizard, the hyena, and Lacrosse's idea was that maybe, at least at some point, these cryptonyms were actually hinting at which Egyptian Isu could have been possessing them, according to the plan that was then abandoned during the conceptual phase. Some more threads and comments landed on the Assassin's Creed subreddit as well, like this one by user RedTheGamer100, who did ask how the community would have received the presence of 12 gods from the Egyptian mythology in Origins, and interestingly enough, Darby participated in the discussion and added even more juicy details. He mentioned that the 12 gods wouldn't have been handled through sages as it happened in Valhalla, but through some Isu masks that contained the consciousness of the gods, of Juno's Isu allies, and these masks would have been worn by some Isu worshipping Order of the Ancient members, which is how they would have been possessed by these quote unquote gods with no presence of magic but through the use of an Apple of Eden. And Darby also added that this idea of the Isu masks would have also played into the common representation representations of the Egyptian gods, who oftentimes are depicted as anthropomorphic animals. One day, perhaps, I may be able to rehabilitate this story into something else, but for now, it's a bit of vestigial lore. 
This is the final comment by Darby about the Hidden 12 on the Axios article. And judging from this statement, it feels like this is not in the cards right now or soon. It seems like it's going to happen one day, compared to how Darby was much more specific with regards to the lingering questions of Valhalla and especially Eivor's final moments in Vingland. And to be honest, that wasn't the only bit of vestigial lore that was left in Unity's modern day files. For example, there was a mention by Juno about Clay and Desmond being in the grey, which was pretty much dead in the water for 6 years until Desmond reappeared in Valhalla, which could also mean that Clay aka Subject 16 might also make an appearance at some point. Even though back in 2020 Darby did mention that, at least in his opinion, in that specific case Juno was lying about Clay, as he had indeed been erased in Assassin's Creed Revelations. Another example is this picture which in lore came from the memories of the sage John Standish and was meant to represent a number of memories from the Isu era, supposedly taking place in Jordan, Tanzania, Ethiopia and close to the Hogar Mountains in Algeria. The text accompanying the picture mentioned that the Isu architecture in there looked like some combination of the Sumerian, Egyptian and Babylonian styles, and this bit of lore too did not find a direct or proper payoff, apart from the Isu temples in Origins which, well, they do have some Egyptian architecture tied to them of course. A third example of abandoned or left behind piece of lore from Assassin's Creed Unity, but honestly there's way more, is the final modern day file called An Intercepted Transmission, where Juno was once again talking to her instruments of the first will about how she planned to have everyone join her in the grey, which was a lore point that in itself was pretty much left behind too, as in her subsequent appearances all her intentions and plans were oriented towards actually getting a new precursor body in the real world rather than having everyone going back to the grey. But back then, in 2014, before Syndicate and Origins, that's what the devs and Darby amidst them were envisioning for her, along with the plans for her and her Hidden 12 Apostles, who were also mentioned in the Interceptor Transmission File 2, where Juno said that The assassins must die before they find my others. Others, beloved? Go now, quickly, go! And of course, those others were indeed planned to be her 12 Isu minions, as Darby confirmed back in 2020. By the way, officially all the modern day Unity files were made available only in a text format, so what you just saw and heard was made up of a series of hidden audio files that we extracted from Unity's folders back in 2015, and that we patched up together to show the proper conversation between Juno and her instruments. Back then we created 7 of these videos where you can find the voiced versions of some of the modern day files of the main game that we recreated from the game's files and also a different, possibly provisional voice actor for Abstergo's Dr. Alvaro Grammatica compared to the one that made an appearance in Assassin's Creed Syndicate. But I digress as usual. Anyway, you can find all these videos in the dedicated playlist called An Intercepted Transmission which you can find on this channel or at the link that we'll add in the description. And that was it for this video, what are your opinions about the endings of the Assassin's Creed games, do you like how they have been executed and do you see any differences as to how they were made for the original games compared to the more recent ones, and what about these vestigial lore connections between Unity and Origins, would you have liked to see them actually finding a payoff in Origins with the 12 Templars and their Isu masks? What was your favorite bit of vestigial lore or plans that never came to be amidst the ones that were shared by the devs over the years? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in our next video.